The Dallas Cowboys fell to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 19 to 3 in week one. What happened? All that and more this episode of the Locked On Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast locked Network. Your on. team every locked, day. Locked, 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 locked on. Locked on Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Landon McCool. Check him out at McCoolBCB. Landon, you had a chance to uh, sleep on the game last night. You get to watch the tape this morning. How are you feeling? I didn't do a, a ton of great sleeping last night, uh, obviously. Uh, I did watch some of the All-22 this morning. Um, you know, I, I, I feel pretty down. And honestly, I, I'm sure a lot of you are too. Just know that we're going to be here regardless for y'all. We're going to be the only thing that's consistent about this team over the next 16 <laughs> weeks. <laughs> Probably so. Suffering along with y'all, so uh, just know that you guys aren't alone out there. Uh, we're, we're out here suffering with you, too. So, Landon and I reacted to the Dak Prescott injury news last night in a podcast that came out. It's on Megaphone. Excuse me. It's on your podcast apps. It's on YouTube. Go check that out. Um, we'll talk about that at the end, I'm sure. But let's today talk about the actual game. The Cowboys lose 19-3. to What are the biggest problems that offense can uh, where do we start? I mean, I, I I think for me, going back and rewatching the game, as much as everyone is like quick to confirm their priors on stuff, I think that the, the number one problem with the offense last night is that Dak played very poorly. I, I think he d- just had a very poor game, and we can just have a discussions about you know wide receivers getting open and and. And creating separation, but I mean, going back and watching the all twenty-two just real quickly, uh, there were guys open. The guys were getting separation, and there were times when Dak was delivering the football late and and late in the window, and 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 it can feel like on the broadcast that those guys weren't open, but often it was because I don't know. There were like two or three different passes where you see Dak like double clutch it and then deliver the ball late and gives enough mm-hmm. time for the defensive back to catch up to the receiver. There were times when Dak just wasn't sure. Or had to wait for the guy to actually. There was just too many times where I felt like the ball should have been out already, and da- and the receiver is gathering himself to stop. And by the time the ball arrives, the defensive back is on top of the the receiver after creating separation. So that's what happened in the past game. In the run game, I, I think that it, it went well, but it just wasn't enough to sustain the offense by itself. Uh, and they well, on top of that, on top of that, you had so many like pre snap penalties and holds yep. and legal guys downfield that like. Okay, now it's first and 15. Yeah, they get a nice six yard run, but you're still in second and nine. Like you're in unfavorable down and distances. Still. The crazy thing about that is that they overcame like the vast majority of those, like in a way that they, they hadn't previously, it seems like, but yeah. they still couldn't continue the drives after that, right? Like they would get into first and 15s or second and 16s, and then they would get like a nine yard run and then a short pass and they convert. Uh, but then they couldn't just keep that rhythm going and, and, you know, it, you know, there's just too many key third downs where uh, the the ball comes out late, the the ball gets knocked away. Uh, you know, the, the it's it's just a, a a miscommunication between the wide receiver and the quarterback or something. Uh, to me, you know, the offensive. If, if we're talking about what what went wrong, you know, as much as what we were worried about, the offensive line being a disaster, uh, wide receivers just not being able to do anything. I, I think. You know, there was some of that, but I mean, the vast majority to me was poor play by the quarterback and and just an inability to kind of get get any kind of rhythm going in the passing game. To me, it felt like Dak just didn't trust his offensive line, and sometimes it was warranted. Other times, it wasn't. Like there was times where he had clean pockets and he was just clutching, and he didn't feel comfortable for for whatever reason. He did not play well. I think this is one of the worst games I've ever seen him play. Truly, I yeah, w- I, without a doubt. And I mean, it's one of those things too where we had talked about it after the game, where he has he has this thing where we've seen before where he ha- he struggles to start games early, and and this is what it looks like when he's struggling early. 
the funny thing about it is that the, the, the opening drive was the best the best thing he did all night probably or, or at least w- one of the best things he did and, but then after that from like uh, the, the second drive all the way to like you know middle of the third quarter even he couldn't do anything like he could i mean he could that's that's not that's way over over broad but I, I, he was really struggling struggling to find any kind of consistency uh, and and really struggling to get the ball out on time. You know, in, in well, I think the Connor the McGovern injury was big because once McGovern went out, Farniak, Matt Farniak, their seventh round pick from Nebraska, he really struggled. And I mean, I don't know how much he's been practicing at left guard, anyways. But he gets into this game, he gives up six pressures, and now you've got a new starter at left tackle, a new starter at left guard with new receivers. And on top of that, Todd Bowles is just a crazy man. Like some of the blitzes and stunts and stuff they were doing uh, was was tough to pick up. And I Dak didn't feel comfortable, and it showed. I mean, he was he was just off all game. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't, don't really wish, wish I had, I wish I had more to say about it. Like it just felt like there were times when that he wasn't let down. And that everything was correct, and especially in some key moments, and it felt like the thing that was breaking down was Dak, which is the the, the other thing that I had noticed, and you can go back and watch it, in the, especially like in the first half. Tampa Bay is not afraid of anybody that Cowboys had was like there, there was just a, such a lack of speed on the Cowboys offense, and you look at the players, and it's okay, it's Noah Brown who runs a four five five, it's Dennis Houston who runs a four five eight, it's C.D. Lamb who's a four five receiver, like. They just weren't afraid of the Cowboys pushing the ball down the field at all. So you had a lot of guys just kind of sitting, you know, within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. It's really hard to operate and play football that way. If you've got to be precise and throw, you know, into really tight windows all game long. At, at the same time, they were getting guys behind the defense. There was a, there was a, a post route where they got the ball or they got the guys down the def, uh, behind the defense. It was the CD lamb. And because Farniak missed the swim move and, and Pollard couldn't get over to block the, yep. the splitting linebacker, uh, Dak couldn't get the ball off all the way that he needed down the field. There was there was another one where uh, uh, Noah Brown ran a corner route underneath a stop route, uh, behind a stop route, and, and, and Dak just didn't see him. So they were getting guys down the field, but Dak sure didn't seem comfortable trying to throw it no. to those guys. No, he didn't. Um, all right, well – We'll talk more about Dak and what the offense is going to look like over the next two, three, four months. But before we do that, I know it's, it's really depressing. Before we do that, we want to tell you about Brightco. Uh, you don't want to be that guy that loses the engagement ring or the necklace or the wedding ring. The guys at Brightco Jewelry make insur- buying insurance so easy that you can get the full replacement of that ring. No matter if it's lost, stolen, or you just can't figure out what happened to it. Go to bright.co forward slash locked on. It's the fastest and easiest and cheapest way to cover your butt with the best jewelry insurance in the business. These guys at Bright Co. are absolute geniuses. They've made buying insurance for your engagement ring, your watch, or whatever so easy that you can get covered in two minutes on your cell phone. You won't find a better deal on great coverage that's super affordable. It's bright.co forward slash locked on. We all hate buying insurance. But for this one, it's just five bucks a month, two minutes on the cell phone at most, and you can get the most comprehensive coverage out there. Check it out, bright.co forward slash locked on. All right, let's talk about the defense because I have some mixed feelings on the defense. Overall, they played pretty well. They gave up only 19 points in this game. They forced a turnover. They had a couple sacks. They held the, the, the Bucks to, I think, five field goals in the first quarter. Was that first half, first three quarters? Um, but they had their moments where they just couldn't get off the field, and Tampa Bay controlled the clock all game. What did you think about the defense? Yeah, it, I mean, it looks similar to last year, right? Where there was just you know getting on you know, up, up until the 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 positive side of the field for the the opposing offense, uh, they moved at will. You know, they were ch- taking huge chunks, and 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 as soon as they got to about the Cowboys you know, 40 yard line and things started to get more condensed. That's when things started really to slow down. That's when the bucks struggled to kind of convert. That's when the Cowboys defense started to clamp down a little bit and was able to get off the field uh, through a series of, of, of great third and fourth down plays. Uh, and then some, some turnovers. Uh, mm-hmm. 
and so I, I think that's sort of very familiar. Um, where I'd love to have seen some improvement is just eliminating the, those chunk plays. You know, just yeah. like I mean, not getting them to to cr- have to march all the way down the field before we kind of clamp down. But again, I kind of think that that's just the the, the design of the defense. You know, they're not going to allow they'll allow chunk plays, but not huge plays down the field. Hopefully, and then once they you start getting into that kind of condensed part of the field that's where they become really, really difficult to move on yeah. and really difficult to score on. Um, I thought that the defensive tackle play was, was uh, much improved than what we've seen previously. Um, I think that, you know, Micah Parsons made several big plays and it's at big points. Uh, I thought the coverage for the most part was, was pretty okay. They definitely gave up some, some, some chunks at times, but mm-hmm. uh, there was a couple of, of really good plays by the defenders at, at, as well. Um you know, I think that the defense did its job for the most part. I, I mean, against what we what we expected, uh, I, I think that they were, you know, re- they really needed an offense to kind of help them out, obviously, oh, yeah. and, and yeah. control the ball a little bit more. Would have, would I think, helped overall. And it's it's shocking that they were able to, to, to hold them to nineteen points yeah. based on what the offense was doing. So Tampa Bay never converted a third or four or longer in the entire game. That's incredible. not a single one. The problem was. In the first half, Tampa Bay never got to third and four or longer. Like their first drive of the game, the longest third down they had was a third and one, which the Cowboys stopped them. That was the Demarcus Lawrence tackle for behind the line, right? Next drive, they got to a third and five, and the Cowboys stopped them, and they kicked the field goal. Next drive, the longest one was a third and two, and they ended up converting it. They got to a third and five. Micah Parsons got the sack. But there was like four different drives where Tampa Bay had like nine plays before they even got to a third down that's where they've got to be better. Like they can't just get gashed on first and second down. Like they were early in this game. Yeah. Especially now, you know, uh, I mean, now that you don't have any kind of even a hypothetical backstop for, you know, points being scored by your offense or hoping to a uh, lot of control by your offense, uh, you're going to need to start clamping down and, 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 you know, getting the ball back and, and getting better field position for your offense. You know, I think that, I mean, not that wasn't necessarily the Cowboys' problem, but that will be a problem going forward if you don't have Dak Prescott. Well, it didn't sure. help. Their field, their field position in this game was awful all game yeah. long. And, I mean, part of it was because of penalties. Part of it was because the, the return game wasn't good. But, like, the Cowboys were already, always starting inside their top 15. So, or, you know, inside their own 15. So, that didn't help. Yeah, and it's going to be something that's going to be, uh, you know, made worse without Dak Prescott for these next few weeks. You're going to need to find a way to get this offense as best a field position as you can, if you want to win any of these games. So uh, they've, they need to kind of find a way to t- take that to the next level uh, and just, you know, clamping down a little bit earlier in these series. Yeah. Uh, we should at least mention Micah Parsons because of all the players yeah. on defense and actually all the players on the team. I mean, he was phenomenal. I mean, just uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure I understood the game plan early on, having him play a lot of traditional linebacker. Uh, but right in the second quarter, they had him playing on the edge, and he disrupted the game. Back to back sacks, had a couple pressures. Um, it was clear that Tom Brady was feeling him a little bit on the outside. I, I thought he was amazing in this game. Yeah, I think he had a 60% pass rush win win rate, which is. Like twenty percent higher than, than than the next highest guy, who I think was Shaq Barrett, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Wow. Well. Um. So, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, what is what else is there to say about this guy? I mean, I mean, they're going to need him to play like a generational a player to, to have yeah. a chance, right? Absolutely. He's. I mean, it, it is what it is, and 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 now he's going to need to kind of really take uh, this opportunity to to be a dominant player, to show the league what he what he can do. Uh, because the Cowboys really, really need him to kind of step up and, and create and destroy the offenses if they're going to have any chance of winning any of these games in the next six to eight weeks. Why do you think their run defense struggled so much in this game? Because Leonard Fournette just torched him in this one. I mean, he was getting big run after big run. 21 carries for 127 yards. Tampa Bay rushed for 152 yards in this game. I mean, it could have been even more if they didn't have a couple of negative runs at the end. But why did they beat Dallas so badly in that part of the game? Trayvon Diggs needs to play better in the run game. Oh, yeah. you know, like I mean, they ran almost exclusively to that left side. If, if there was a stat they even put up there, yeah, last night that like they had like almost 200 yards rushing or something, and like 100 
10, 15 plus uh, was just on the left side. Uh, and I think it's because they, 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 they knew that the fits on the outside that, that, that these defensive backs didn't want to ta- tackle, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? I forget, uh, Leonard Fournette. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's, it was a huge portion of it. I mean, that, that the defensive backs on the outside were struggling to make tackles and, and, and that was picking up extra yardage. Um, I, you know, I, I think, <sighs> I think that it, I, I I was kind of surprised by it honestly. I was surprised by the numbers, you know, because yeah. it, it didn't seem like that necessarily in the game. Um, when they needed to, to run the football, they didn't do a great job at times. Again, it seems like all the yardage that they were picking up was on the on the other side of the fifty yard line. So I don't know. I, I mean, I I think like I said, a, a huge percentage of it was happening all on one side of the field, um, and I and I and. I can't imagine that it was just, you know, uh, uh, one or two players there because they were rotating the defensive line. So they must have found something schematically that they took advantage of. And yeah, I, I, I think, think it was, I think it was a combination backs. of Dorrance Armstrong and Trevon Diggs on that one side. Like, let's, let's go after these guys. And they had a, a lot of success doing it. So that's something that the Cowboys will have to clean up. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about what the next few months are going to look like. But before we do that, <laughs> I want to tell you about prize picks. How does it work? All you have to do is pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their prize pick projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize picks offers projections on just about any sport you watch, including NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis. MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. Entries could be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. They are currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Prize Pick app or go to prizepick.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit 100, they'll give you 100. If you deposit 60, they'll give you 60. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on it. Sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right, Landon. Um, we only have 16 more of these games left. I know that seems like a lot, uh, but what's the plan now for the Cowboys? Because I, I have to assume that Dak is not going to be back out until at least after the bye right after their week nine by I think that's safe to probably. So how do you guesstimate. survive? Yeah. How do you, how do they survive? What's the goal? Do you make a trade for a quarterback? What do you want to see? I, I kind of think that you, 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 you go through this next game with Cincinnati and you see how you respond. I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know that you trade for a quarterback. That, I mean, that's where I'm at because is a Jimmy Garoppolo going to save the season for you? No. And 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 I think that I would rather have the draft pick than watching Jimmy Garoppolo s- suck on our team for 6 weeks, you know? So uh, it's not a it's not a, you know, a pretty uh a choice no. and it's not like, you know, exactly you know the the, the decisions you want to be making. Um I think you have to find a way to try to win some of these games over the next few weeks on with the talent you've got on this roster and I mean, hope for the best, you know, and hope you get Dak Prescott back. Hope that the NFC East doesn't pull itself so far away from you that you don't have a chance to recover in the back end of the season. Um, I mean, I think the, Oh man, I I I hate that. We're trying to be optimistic. I, if you, if you could get to four and four by the time Dak Prescott gets back, that gives you a chance. Three and five even gives you a slight chance that you come back and you make a little bit of a run. I just I don't I don't see it. I, I don't I don't see them getting to four and four. I, I especially with some of the games coming up against the Rams and the Packers and the Bengals. Maybe I, I you beat the it. maybe you beat the Giants, maybe you beat Washington, maybe you beat Chicago and you win three games, right? Maybe. Um maybe you can steal one from Detroit. You know who looked much better than yeah. any of us expected. I think versus uh, Philadelphia, yeah, Philadelphia last week, this week. So uh, 
I, I honestly, I think at this point, you know, with a hurt quarterback, you have to lean into the idea that the ball is oblong and that the, the league is, is crazy uh, and that you have to just kind of do your best these week to week games. And then when Dak gets back, hope that you can go on a run and, and kind of kick it into high gear and, and, and do something to make a push at the end of the year. Look, I mean, Philadelphia did something similar without injuring their quarterback last year, right? They, I think they started out like two and six or something like that, and then ended up going six and two in the back end. So, um, or it's not, you know, those numbers don't matter, but something close yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that's kind of where the Cowboys are. I think that if you try to spin your wheels too much to try to get a quarterback in here, you're going to hurt your long term outlook. The whole point of a lot of this stuff was to make get your out, long term outlook in a good situation. So, to risk all of that now seems stupid. Like I would unless, say, unless it's like a fifth, sixth, seventh round pick. Like if it's for a late day three pick, I don't. Oh care. yeah. But yeah. if it, if you're saying like, hey, do you want to give up a second round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo for but, seven yeah. weeks? Absolutely. Well, that, not. that's the problem, right? Is like, who are you getting for a fifth, sixth, seventh round pick? Who like is moving the needle at quarterback. Nobody. Right? And like, that's why nobody. that's probably not going to happen. And unless, unless you're just bringing in somebody that could help you a little bit that you like better than Will Greer. Like that's, that's basically it. Garoppolo will, would move the needle, but he's going to cost you a second or a first round pick. Like, are you willing to give up that to like, well, to rent you, a guy you, for th- four weeks? I'm are you ready for weeks, this? Is, does he even really move the needle? Like, let's say you make the Garoppolo trade. How many more wins are you expected to get with Garoppolo over Cooper Rush? One, yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're talking about ultimate bottom line, yeah, it's like okay, it's great. You're now you're you're eight and nine, and you just lost a top fifty pick. Yeah, I, that's why I wouldn't lose. I wouldn't trade the pick for a quarterback. I mean, all right, I think so, you just have to take your lumps at this point. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, listen, this is not a great case scenario for Cowboys to, fans to be in. We've been in it before in 2010, right? Uh, in 2015 and 2020, like you just got to kind of grind your teeth and get through it. But if you're, I don't want to say the season's completely lost. Like the uh, the chances of Dallas making the playoffs have now dropped significantly, winning the NFC East. But if you are a Cowboys fan, what are you? What do you want to see over the next two, three, four months that will make you feel better about where the team is at? I think your know, positive development of the younger younger guys on their team. I mean, these guys are all going to still be going out there and grinding and playing. So, uh, you know, any kind of improvement that you're seeing along, you know, some of these young guys in the offensive line, some of the defensive guys. I mean, that's all positive stuff that's going going to have positive impacts on your team in the future once Dak gets back. The whole point of the way this team is constructed is to be ramp, like we said, ramping it up into the time for the playoffs to be you know, kind of increasing the talent as the season goes on through experience with these young guys. So what we would like to see is some continued development. I think it might be a little bit tougher for the wide receivers to do so without Dak, but I think the offensive line still can do its thing. I think all the defenders can still kind of develop as, as you want them to. Um, So there is lots to watch. There is lots to see with this team. There may not be a lot of winning. You know, that's that's the terrible, not fun, no good yep. part of this. And, yep. and honestly, like, I think for the people that are listening to this podcast, you're probably watching either way. Um, but I, I think, you know, if, if you're trying to look for some silver lining here, uh, you know, you're looking for the development and for, for, you know, things that will benefit the Cowboys in the future once their quarterback comes back. And I actually hope, like, in the case of Michael Gallup, like somebody like that, maybe this – slows yeah. down the timeline right like and maybe for tyron smith the same way like okay tyler no we were really hoping you'd be back in december let's let's make sure you're healthy and your body's ready to go by 2023 hey michael gallup we know that you might have been ready for week three let's get you ready for week seven when we play to make sure you're 100 percent. like i think i think you have to start thinking about things like that long term um so uh, a couple other injury things that we should update fans about Connor McGovern has a high ankle sprain. Steven Jones said one to two weeks. That feels optimistic to me. I, I don't know about you, Landon. I, I don't want to see Connor McGovern on the field in one week after a high ankle sprain. Yeah, I mean, you know, he called Tyler's Tyler Smith's thing a high ankle sprain too. So maybe he just doesn't know where 
wear on the ankle is high. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if, if it's closer to Tyler Smith's thing, I, I, I don't have a problem with it, but if it's a true high ankle sprain, he's not, yeah. I mean, you know, you broke a bone basically. Yep. You, you, uh, you're, you've got, you'll be out for a while. J Ron curse has a sprained MCL. He's going to miss somewhere between two to six weeks, which is a bummer for him. He was already dealing with a neck injury going into yesterday's game. I would have to imagine that means you're going to see more Izzy Makamu marquee spell over the next couple of weeks. Correct. Yeah, I would say that that's the last game that those two guys are probably going to be inactive for for quite a while. Yep. Uh, Terrell Basham has an injury that seemed pretty severe last night. I don't imagine we'll see him anytime soon, which probably means more snaps for Sam Williams. Likely. Yeah. I mean, defensive line, I mean, you, you like Basham and you want that player back, but I think the defensive end spot is a spot that you can kind of withstand a little bit of that and be okay. <sighs> So the Cowboys are going to be going into week two without their starting quarterback, their starting left tackle, their starting left guard, their number two receiver, their starting strong safety. It's, it's, it's pretty bleak already, Landon. Yeah, and they're playing the uh, the former uh, runner-up of the Super Bowl. So, uh, yeah. The good news is the Bengals looked absolutely horrific horrible, uh, on Sunday. So, I mean – terrible. Uh, Trust me, I watched every snap of that game. It was gross. Uh, all right, so we'll, we've will we got a busy week. We're going to do some questions on Tuesday. We'll get you ready for the game against the Bengals. Maybe the Cowboys can pull off uh, an upset at home. Uh, I would think that the Cowboys' pass rush should have a big, a big performance in that one. We shall see. Season's not completely over yet, so make sure you're you're still following along and listening to the Locked on Cowboys podcast. You should also check out, check out – the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. If you want to watch some teams and listen to some teams that actually have some hopes this season, Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow our show on YouTube. You can check Landon out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you guys next time.